please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I now have the invocation by Jerry Wisenauer, Captain of the U.S. Marine Corps. Unless you're in uniform, please remove your covers. Our most gracious and loving God, we stand before you as proud veterans, family, and friends of the armed forces of the United States of America, Canada, and other allied countries. We have served you and our country proudly and faithfully. Today, we salute those who have given their lives in defense of our freedoms and in defense of the Constitution of the United States of America. We also salute those who are suffering from wounds, loss of limbs, or disease suffered while serving you and our country. Be with those who are homeless or suffering from PTSD. And Father, please be with the spouses, children, and families of these veterans. Father, we know that your will is our will, and we must focus all our efforts on our eternal life to be spent with you. Most of all today, Father, we ask you to stand and protect those who are serving on active duty in defense of our freedom and our country. Watch over them continually. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jerry. I'm glad to welcome you all today to our video Veterans Day ceremony. It was our intention to have it back this year at the River Club until Hurricane Ian intervened uh, in September and took down our River Club. Then we hoped to have it outside in front of the clubhouse, but Hurricane Nicole came to us a couple of days ago. So we're doing a video presentation this year to honor all the wonderful veterans of Pelican Sound, and we hope next year to be back in the River Club. Next, I'd like to introduce our general manager and chief operating officer, Eric Long, for some remarks. Eric? Thank you, Mr. Collins. To all veterans here today, I sincerely thank you for your service and your sacrifice. Thank you all for choosing to honor Veterans Day virtually here at Pelican Sound. This marks the 16th year that we've held the ceremony here at Pelican Sound. We're truly honored to show our support for our heroes, past and present. I've not served in the military, but like many, have family members that have served. Last year I mentioned my grandfather on my mother's side, Jacob Mills, who served as a sergeant in the Army Corps from 1942 through 1945. I honored him by naming my son, Jacob, after him. Today I'd like to mention my grandfather on my father's side, who served in the U.S. Navy from 1942 through 1945. My gra grandfather, Ray Long, served as a CB and worked to complete airfields by building housing units and providing infrastructure support for 700 miles of the Solomons and surrounding islands of the South Pacific. Admiral Hazley, in the South Pacific Allied Commander, who was quoted praising the Navy CBs for their speed and craftsmanship from which they built airfields. The skills and traits my grandfather learned while in the service were instilled in me over the years of my early childhood. He taught me not to be afraid of getting my hands dirty. Work with a purpose and always strive to do your best. My grandfather has been gone for many years, but I hope to instill these skills and traits in my son for years to come. In ending, on Veterans Day, we honor your service, dedication, and valor, and forever grateful for your sacrifice. Thank you so much for serving your country. Each year we show pictures of our Pelican Sound veterans from their service days. This year we have a number of new photos, both the new arrivals and long-term Pelican Sound residents. We also honor residents whose children or grandchildren serve in the armed forces. Our first two segments begin now. Thank you. 
outside, we normally do a service branch muster call. That's not possible today. But we do want to recognize all the armed services, the U.S. Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, the U.S. Space Force, and the Coast Guard, as well as all of our allies and friends from Canada, Great Britain, and elsewhere. We salute you all, veterans. A lot of people know Tony Albertini at Pelican Sound. He's been a resident here since 2001. We are honoring Tony today for his Navy service in World War II. Tony, who turned 98 in September, is our oldest World War II veteran. And it's likely that Tony is the only Pelican Sound veteran to survive a torpedoed ship. Tony grew up in Baltimore where his parents worked in the garment industry. He was drafted right out of high school at Mount St. Joseph Academy in June of 1943. Uh, they sent your letter, said you could report here, and you report there, and uh, it was so. Uh, they didn't give me an option. They just said, uh, one, well, one man did. He said, would you rather go in the Navy, because the Navy was the one that picked me out. And uh, I said, I'd rather go to the Navy. I have a brother-in-law that's in the Navy, so. Like all Navy recruits, he did his boot camp at the Great Lakes Training Center in Chicago. They, they picked me to go to visual communication, which was signal flags Flag. and blinker light. And you ever see a ship with all the ships hanging on it? Mm -hmm. Every flag is a letter, and you're sending messages by the flag. And then I was, I finished that, and uh, then they said, well, we got to send you back for another, another four or five weeks to learn the international trade, it's because I didn't know that at the time. I was being put into the merchant fleet, because every the merchant ship had a crew of Navy men on it. Submarines had no communication with our, our own communication, had no communication with the ships, unless they had someone who could deal with the Navy, because the Navy guys were the only one. So if the Navy wanted to send a message to the merchant fleet, the merchant fleet that didn't know our system. So they put uh, a man on every ship, a merchant, a Navy man on every merchant ship. Serving with the Merchant Marine in World War II generally meant serving on a Liberty ship. This was a class of cargo ships built by the hundreds during World War II. The 2700 Liberty ships came to symbolize the U.S. wartime industrial output and they were built in 18 shipyards across the United States. So now it's April 16th, 1944. Tony had been in the Navy for less than a year, and now he found himself serving as a Navy signal man on the Thomas G. Masaryk. The Masaryk was part of a convoy which had left New York in March, heading to Abadan, Iran. And at 6.20 that night, Everything changed. The torpedo hit us, and I had just come out of the shower, so I had a pair of dungarees on with no underwear, and uh, I didn't have a, a shirt. And uh, of course, I came out, and everything is abandoned, Jim. And he said, Come on, Tony, you gotta jump. I said, Jump hell, I don't have a. Oh, the life jacket. Oh, jump in any. The ship had been hit on the port side, tearing a hole 26 feet long. The acetone cargo in the hold immediately caught fire. So the 70 man crew abandoned ship in four lifeboats. Miraculously, all survived and were rescued by the British ship La Moline and taken to Alexandria, Egypt. 
said that they, uh, they picked us up, took us in, into uh, Egypt. They took us so they uh, gave us a clothes. Uh, the Americans, uh, they were merchants. You know. And then, then we were picked up in two or three days and uh, I was one of the three guys that we picked up for survival to bring us back to the state. So Tony and some of the other survivors were back in another convoy, this time on the way back to the U.S. to a port as yet not determined. The ship that was going to go to the States, they put three or, three or four of us that were survivors on that ship. So we didn't have much to do until we got to the States. And as we approached the States, the uh, commodore of the, of the convoy was sending that message now. We were all signalmen, the three of us, mm -hmm. and I had to be on duty. And he starts sending the city to the ship you're on, it's going to. So I had to be on duty, and we were like a, a day out, and the, the uh, Commodore sent a message to our ship and said, your destination is Baltimore, Maryland. Back in Baltimore on leave, Tony visited family and friends, and with a buddy's encouragement, he made a special connection which changed the rest of his life. You gotta call Roslyn. This is, she says, every time I turn around, she's asking for you, asking, what had to, I had my last dance with her before I went, and uh, we had, I, I didn't really impress her or whatever. So I, 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 I get the captain to give us the change, and then I got enough money to get to my dad's place. So I called him, the number, and I said to his, uh, is this Rosalind Palmieri? She says, yeah. Who are you? <laughs> These are the parents. I said, well, I'm, from what I understand, we used to dance together up at the whatever, and uh, she didn't know I was at the door. Her parents didn't tell her. And they, they said to the daughter, there's a young man named Anthony, got work to do, wants to see you. And so she, she came to the door and she said, oh my God. Anyway, from there she had the car, we went to Drew's Haven, you know, the, the zoo, the zoo and boat, yeah. and sat out in the, uh, open area and just talked. With his leave over, it was back to the merchant marine ships for Tony, including service for the SS William Kent and the SS Rhode Island. This time it was in the North Atlantic. By comparison, the rest of his Navy service was more routine. No more torpedoed ships. Tony was released from the Navy in March of 1946 as a signalman third class. He returned to Baltimore and began his business career. He and Rosalind married in 1947 and had two children, Mark and Teresa. After retiring from a successful career in the insurance business, Tony and Rosalind moved to Pelican Sound in 2001. Rosalind passed in 2010. Today, Tony still lives in the Masters, now with his daughter, Teresa. Tony Albertini is a proud veteran, and we're proud to know him here at Pelican Sound. 
His Navy service was selfless and heroic. He's a true member of the greatest generation. Each year, we honor the memory of Pelican Sound veterans lost since our last ceremony. Let us reflect on and honor the service of Richard Clemens, U.S. Navy. Len Moreski, U.S. Army. Roger Drury, U.S. Army. Donald Haas, U.S. Army. 
Douglas under Koffler, U.S. Air Force. Jack E. Funderburg, U.S. Navy. On behalf of all the veterans of Pelican Sound, I would like to pay a special tribute to the last individual listed, our friend and special colleague, Jack E. Funderburg. Jack was a longtime member of the Pelican Sound Veterans Committee and was instrumental in organizing and presenting the Veterans Day ceremony at Pelican Sound. Thank you, Jack, for all the contributions you made to this program. We salute you. 